Hey, I'm Ezra Koenig, and uh, this is my song CV. So first up is Mansard Roof. Let's see, I remember that the, the A section of the song, the, the vocal song, I wrote in my head, which I wish happened more often because it's the easiest way to write, but it popped into my head when I was at my teacher training, which is at St. John's University in Queens, when I was training to become a teacher, which is my first job out of college. So I just remember this melody popped in my head, I see a Mansard Roof for the trees. So that's kind of how it started. I kind of consider this like the first Vampire Weekend song. That could be wrong, Walcott could have come a little bit earlier, but I was at my parents' house in New Jersey, probably home for a weekend while I was at college, and I started writing this song on uh, the piano. I made a little demo, and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. I hadn't heard of the phrase Oxford comma before. I saw it in a very early Facebook group. Facebook was probably only one or two years old at the time, and there was a group at my school that was called Students for the Preservation of the Oxford Comma. And I was like, well, A, what is an Oxford comma? It's kind of an amazing sequence of words, and B, like, who cares? That lyric just kind of came out. Who gives a fuck about an Oxford comma? I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. And then even like, you know, it's a very simple song, but even like musically, I just remember playing the chords, and, and the first thing that happened is like the way that the, played the D chord, this little music nerd, but just had like the, the seventh and the bass. And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of classical or something. It's just like this very small thing. And I was like, oh, I like that. So, you know, then, uh, we worked on it in our first practice, and it went from just being like a little song that I like to being like, oh, this kind of sounds like a band or something. So to me, that's like a very important early song for us. You know, in many ways, this is the best known Vampire Weekend song. It's an interesting one, because some people, it's the only song they know, probably in most fans, like top five favorite songs, but it, you know, it's a very important song for us. When I think about this song, I mean, I still think about it, the fact that it was in the movie Step Brothers, because I think <laughs> that introduced a lot of people to Vampire Weekend, and it was the first time we said yes to having one of our songs in a movie, and it, I'm always very thankful that it worked out so well, because I love that movie. I think it's Will Ferrell's best film, and I'm very proud that A-Punk is the, the opening song. That song came at the moment when we really needed it. We were working on the third record, and just starting to feel like didn't have enough songs or wasn't sure where it was heading and then I remember that was uh, one where the lyrics came very quickly basically Rossum started playing the the main chords bum 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 you know you're lucky when you hear some music like that and then and then you start getting like a melody and lyrics it's kind of like a weird curse if you come up with a good melody but you don't have any lyrics because then you're just like stuck with this weird thing for months or years but very quickly maybe because it's like a bit of a folk song I kind of came up with like almost all the lyrics in the room, which is, for me as somebody who like can really pour over word choice and drive myself crazy, to come up with most of the lyrics in the room is like this one in a million thing that makes me very happy. I really like Cousins. One, one thing I, I found about Cousins, you know, like I was saying before, we have so many different like fans and different people like different songs and we have people, some people gravitate towards the quiet songs, some people towards the loud songs. This is obviously a huge generalization, but the, the two times I can think about it that kind of some rappers came over to me and said they liked Vampire Weekend were ASAP Rocky and Post Malone. And they both specifically said they like Cousins. Th their music doesn't sound very similar, so I, I don't know what to make of that. It might be like a generational thing, maybe, that they missed the first album or something. But I was always, I liked that. I was like, all right, ASAP Rocky and Post Malone, their favorite Vampire Weekend song is Cousins. Cool. That, that song is like very reflective to me of like stuff that I liked when I was probably like 12 or 13. I love ska and surf music and kind of like high energy stuff. So that's a pretty special song to me. I gotta give credit for where that song really started. And that's with McConan, professionally known as I Love McConan. And he's somebody that I've known for a long time. Um, I initially met him through our mutual friend Despot in New York. And um, when I first heard his music, one of the first songs I heard was a song called Tonight. Club Going Up on a Tuesday became this like massive hit and had Drake on it. And I, people just put me onto him, like, oh, you should check out this guy. And I didn't know that he was a fan of Vampire Weekend or anything, but I just heard the song Tonight, which I really thought was beautiful. And, and he had this line 
that always jumped out at me. That's uh, you've been cheating on, cheating on me. I've been cheating on, cheating on you. His his finishes. You've been cheating on me, Brianna. And then it goes into a different place. But I was always struck by that because I was like, there's a lot of songs about cheating. I don't know if I've ever heard a song that was just straight up just like, cut the crap, we've been cheating on each other. And there's something that I thought was like kind of real and, and very like mature about that. Not like, how dare you do this to me? Or, or just like, oh my God, I did something bad. Like, wow. It was like truly just like, we're at this weird place. So that line always stayed with me. And then I'm working on this other song that uh, kind of started, you know, had like a little bit of like a upbeat Vampire Weekend type. Da -na -da -da -da. And I thought it was like cool. But then I started to pair it with that McConan lyric, and that's when I really started to like the song. He's officially part of a Vampire Weekend song. He's, he's one of the writers on it. That, was, that song was a long time in the making. I first wrote it kind of as like this folky country song when I was still in college, kind of before Vampire Weekend was really a band. And it kind of named after uh, somebody that I knew whose name is actually Hannah Hunt. I, I let her know, of course, before it came out, like, are you cool with this? And I also said, you know, by the way, I do know that your name is pronounced differently, but, you know, just whatever. Yeah, I kind of wrote the basics, the basic version of it with the, the, main, the lyrics and stuff. But then we tried it a couple times and I was just never satisfied with the arrangement. And then we picked it up again on the third album and then we really, you know, put some time into it. and then it became kind of what it is. And it's been cool that that song was never a single. There actually were, I'm not gonna name any names, but there were like quite a few people in, in the Vampire Weekend universe who uh, questioned whether it should make it on the album. I question if songs should make it on the album all the time too, so I'm certainly not, I can't judge anybody. But it's been really rewarding to see that that song has become like, like a true fan favorite. Yeah, you've seen people, it, it popping up on lists and yeah, even on like lists of the decade and stuff, and you're like, that's pretty good, you know, considering that that wasn't, didn't come out before the record or anything, you know, it didn't get like radio play or anything like that. And that's, again, I think in like a catalog, you need all these things. You need Hannah P Hunt and you also need A-Punk and you just hope that the Hannah Hunts of the world don't go unnoticed. That's a song I made with uh, Major Laser. It's the first song I ever did with Diplo. Diplo is somebody I really like being in the studio with. So with this song, Jessica, he found this sample, um, which is you know from some an, an old Jamaican record. And the first thing that I noticed about it was that I loved the chord progression. It's uh, kind of similar to the uh, chord progression you find in like Radiohead Creep or um, the Hollies. You know, it's just like a classic progression. But I never heard it in a 60s ska or rock steady um, context. So I was like really struck by it. So I just listened to this loop over and over again and then I started writing something on top and I recorded some vocals literally into the mic on my laptop, sent it back to him. That's why it's so lo-fi. They put it out. And one good memory I have of this song is Wes Diplo brought me out to perform it at a Major Lazer concert in Kingston, which I think was 2013, 2014, and you know, in Jamaica, where you know, probably the the most influential music country per capita on earth. You like to go play like in Kingston. It actually went down really well, and it was like a great vibe at the show. So it's a nice memory of singing Jessica at the Major Lazer show in Kingston. That's a song that took us a, a long time to crack in the studio. It started out with this like kind of track that Rostam had made that had some of the key elements of it, that kind, some of like the chopped up drums, some of the cool guitar stuff. Then I wrote kind of like the chorus, the second part, and you know, like the baby, 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 and that's, you know, we had these two cool parts and it felt all right. I don't know why, but I was just, uh, maybe making the, that album, Modern Vampires, I was just kind of perpetually dissatisfied. It just like felt like we needed to push everything to this other place. And a lot of people liked the song, but I was just always kind of like, it's missing something. And there are definitely a few times I got dramatic and I was like, well, don't have to put it on the album. Like, you know, whatever, maybe we, we failed. And then it was this really small thing, just for the first chorus, I was already singing, baby, 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 you know. And then um, Ariel, who also worked, Ariel Rekshad also worked on the record. He was like, okay, why don't we try something with the vocal? And we'd, uh, maybe we tried pitching it down and I was just like, that's lame. And he just did this much smaller thing, which is to use a formant shifter, which is basically, it, it, it's a, it's not just changing the pitch, it's like literally changing kind of like the, the quality of 
of your voice and he kind of did it in this way that would kind of go down and up and then it was like this small thing but that only happens once in the song but I was you know sometimes that's that's what how it works like you know there's something good about a song but you need that one little thing to feel like comfortable with it and that's the that was like the final nail in the coffin where I was like all right cool and then it became you know the first single on that album so it's a good thing Hold Up Beyonce that's a that was also a reunion for me and Diplo. I'll say this, me and, <laughs> me and Wes don't, we don't get together in the studio that often, but we do have like a pretty good hit rate. I feel like we've probably been in the studio together like four times, and one time we did Jessica, and one time we did Hold Up, and I'm like, that's, that's pretty good, we should do it more often. So Hold Up, that's a song where Wes played me this sample, which is from a 60s record, and I think the reason that he had liked it, and the reason that I liked it too, was that it's not, it wasn't a ska record, but it had a little bit of that feel. And if you listen to the real song, you know, it has nothing to do with ska or reggae at all, but it, had, it has like this unusual feel. I had this like old tweet in mind where I was kind of quoting the yeah, yeah, yeahs, but instead of wait, they don't love you like I love you, hold up, they don't love you like I love you. It was an old tweet, I don't know why it popped into my head in that moment, and then I kind of started writing a melody and then wrote this, can't you see there's, originally I said, can't you see there's no other God above you? What a wicked way to treat the man who loves you. And uh, Beyonce changed it to, she ch took the God part out, which I think was a good choice. But so me and Wes made this little demo. He sent me the, the little uh, bounce of, of what we'd done that day in the studio. And I wrote back saying, I think that's a pretty good hook, if I do say so myself, you know. I'm generally pretty humble, but at that time I was just like, I just wanted to like make this, I just wanted him to remember that I was like, this is a good one. He did remember, and I said to him at some point, I was like, can this one be maybe a Vampire Weekend song, not a Major Lazer song? Because obviously at the time, those were the two choices. Years later, he's hitting me up like, Beyonce might want to use it, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Just heard too many stories about people saying like, oh, we wrote a song for Rihanna, and I was like, yeah, all right, I wrote a song for Rihanna too. Everybody wrote a song for Rihanna, like, is it gonna be a Rihanna song? So I wondered and then um, I was very amazed when I heard the finished version. I, you know, it's the, I saw her perform that song a few times actually, uh, but one time in particular at a stadium in LA and that blew my mind. I, I still kind of can't believe that it all worked out that way. But yeah, I'm proud to be a part of it. And she, you know, she had a lot of other people contribute after our initial demo and she put it all together. So, you know, props to her. The next song is I Promise You, um, and that's a song that was performed by James Corden in the character of Peter Rabbit, I guess. Um, and the way that came about is basically the director of the Peter Rabbit movie um, had been using a lot of Vampire Weekend music to kind of like temp in, in the movie, just like kind of for fun. And then he had this idea of maybe you could do an original song. And I do have very warm feelings towards the character of Peter Rabbit. Um, I had like a stuffed animal as a youth that was Peter Rabbit. And I was like, I don't know, I liked all those characters. So I always felt like very connected to Peter Rabbit and his struggle against getting murdered by the, that farmer. You know, I'm, I have like a little demo of it, which you can listen to. But it was also kind of tight just to have, you know, somebody like James who has kind of like this very different voice than me. You know, he's like a kind of stage background. It's like kind of big belting voice and he just kind of came through and just kind of like nailed it and um, you know something for the children so uh, <laughs> it's glad to be a part of it. If you enjoyed that video click here to subscribe. Radio X